All right, so I want to start off with how to diagnose infected uh, endovascular stent grafts. Uh, a couple important things. One is that the cultures may not be positive. 33% uh, of cases have negative cultures, so it's important to still have a high index of suspicion in the appropriate clinical situation. We need to look at the CBC, the, uh, the CRP, which uh, you can have an elevated white count, elevated CRP. CTA is the gold standard for diagnosing infected aortic endografts. When things are not clear, you can consider other modalities, uh, including white blood cell scans. Some of the CT findings that are important to consider, perigraft uh, air, tissue infiltration, intrasac collections, fluid accumulation, soft tissue attenuation, uh, ectopic gas, pseudoaneurysms, discontinuity of the aneurysm wall, focal bowel thickening, direct contrast enhancement in the bowel. The first case I'm going to present is a patient of mine, 76-year-old male, uh, history of AFib, uh, CHF. He underwent an elective EVAR for a 6-centimeter aneurysm. Ten days post-op, developed a UTI uh, and was then bacteremic with pseudomonas. About one month after treatment, he represented with new onset abdominal pain and fever. Uh, this was his initial CAT scan. You can see this is the aortic wall that's no, no longer in continuity, uh, and there's this periaortic uh, collection. And you're gonna, I'm just going to go through a few representative images. We also obtained a white blood cell scan, which you can see there's obvious area of uptake here. So in terms of the treatment, you have two really ways to kind of deal with this. One is a conservative approach, and the other is surgical. Conservative really is prolonged IV antibiotics, CT-guided drainage as needed. Uh, this is guaranteed to fail eventually. It's just a matter of time. Uh, this is something to consider as a palliative maneuver or as a bridging maneuver. And then surgical, there are many ways to manage this surgically. Uh, explantation is usually required in all cases. You can couple that with an extra anatomic bypass uh, with aortic ligation, uh, iliac ligation if needed. Rifampin, so grafts have been used. Uh, we can do harvest femoral vein and use that as a conduit. We can use cryopreserved. There are other ways to manage it. So when to consider this conservative approach? Uh, this is a paper that was recently published uh, looking at this. And in general, if you have a patient that has a lifespan of less than six months for unrelated reasons, uh, malignancy, et cetera, that's a patient where you may want to just try to buy yourself some time. This is a paper published out of this institution uh, by Dr. Marin and his colleagues. And this looked at seven high-risk patients with aortoenteric fistula, two primary, five or secondary, one patient was a patient with a celiac aneurysm that uh, was in continuity with the duodenum. Uh, three patients underwent AUI, one, two underwent tube graft placement, one underwent a bifurcated graft placement. One patient went, underwent a CT-guided drainage post-op. The point I want to make here is of this, six that underwent endovascular repair, three late deaths occurred due to other reasons. There were two MIs at 11 and 13 months, and one CVA at 18 months that resulted in mortality. These three patients didn't die from the infected endograft. Three other patients uh, were alive at a mean follow-up of 36 months, ranging from 23 to 67 months. So it is, is something to consider in, in our elderly population with infected endografts. Uh, go on to the next one. So for my patient, the surgical plan was uh, to, he had, he, he had persistent pain on IV antibiotics, uh, we decided to go ahead with an axe by fem uh, bypass. We explanted the EVAR and subsequently ligated uh, the aorta and the iliacs. What's interesting is once we actually began the exposure, similar to what we saw on the CAT scan in terms of discontinuity of the aorta, this is actually uh, aortic thrombus and basically a contained, contained rupture, essentially. That said, once we actually removed the thrombus, you can see the endograft in place and it's actually hemostatic. Uh, so we subsequently explanted the stent graft. You can see the stent graft, aortic thrombus. And this is a post-operative CT scan. You can see the axfem bypass here, ligated the distal aorta. This is the residual aortic wall. And this patient actually, this is the femfem, went on to make a full recovery. He had initially some lymphatic leak that eventually resolved. 
Another patient I want to present is this 80-year-old gentleman uh, with history of COPD, uh, had a cabbage, had a AAA repair managed open 25 years ago. He presented with a GI bleed. This is his initial CAT scan. This is the, this is the distal aorta. This is the aortic bifurcation. At the distal anastomosis, this was a tube graft. It was in continuity with the bowel. I'll show this in a couple different projections here. So you can see this is the bowel. This is the, the area of continuity. So given this patient presented with a GI bleed, we initially managed with a stent graft as a temporizing maneuver. We then proceeded with cardiopulmonary evaluation uh, to assess the suitability for definitive surgery. Uh, after an uneventful EVAR, he was discharged on IV antibiotics. Uh, he had actually a favorable cardiac and pulmonary workup. Uh, he was originally scheduled to return for an elective uh, definitive operation, but four weeks later, he actually presented with sepsis. Here you can see the endograft with perigraft air. And this confirmed our suspicions that this was likely a colonic uh, aortic fistula. This is just a short video. Kind of go to the meat of it. So this is actually the graft, and this is the sigmoid colon. This is the sigmoid colon. This is the actual fistula here. So after taking down the fistula, we then expose the graft. You can see this. This is actually the native graft, the original graft that was placed. What's interesting here is you can see the native graft, the suture line was broken, and this is exactly where the fistula was. So ultimately, we got proximal distal aortic control took out this stent graft. Preoperatively, we actually did a carotid, uh, uh, axe bifem bypass uh, with plugging of the bilateral iliacs. Uh, this is a study that was published um, out of Montefiore with uh, Dr. Marin, Dr. Sanchez, uh, and, and colleagues, where they took 18 dogs and they managed eight endovat with an endovascular stent graft, 10 with an open surgical graft, and they inoculated all these grafts with Staph aureus. What they noticed, which is an interesting finding, is that 50% of the dogs with the standard graft actually cleared the bacteremia by 14 days, while only 20% of those with an endograft uh, cleared the bacteremia. The, after uh, euthanizing all these animals, they found that the number of bacteria that were found on the grafts was significantly higher for the stent grafts. And what they, what they propose is that the, the host defense mechanisms can't target that bacteria and clear it uh, for stent grafts. So it's just something to keep in mind. Thank you.